American portrait artist Maria Bennett Hock was willing to speak with me today about the program and about portrait painting, so let's get started. And if you would consider, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. We're going to start my first interview with one of my favorite artists, who is specifically a portrait artist, and I think that's really important within the context of Portrait Artist of the Year. So, mm -hmm. Maria Bennett Hock, thank you for coming, and maybe you could introduce yourself to people who oh, don't know who you thank are. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm uh, Maria Bennett Hock. I uh, I have well, I'm a. I think it's important to know that I'm a military brat, military spouse, and I've lived all over the world. I didn't start painting. As a matter of fact, I didn't have almost anything to do with art until I was in my 50s. I'm 71 now. And I, um, I poured into it, and I am all in every day, all the time. I paint every day. I go to as many museums as I can, art openings, anything I can do, art books, anything I can do to, um, to try to improve and learn and uh, just keep moving forward. And, and I love Portrait Artist of the Year. I love watching... I just, I, love, I just love the whole concept of the show. It just, I feel like it broadens my world. Interesting. Now, I know that you also paint with other people on a regular basis, and I know the names of some yes. of those people, and they're quite the award-winning artist here in the United States. So mm -hmm. are they f fans of the program? What is your experience of... Um, I, well, I travel and do shows with uh, Carrie Waller and Deb Kearse, oh. and um, I don't believe, he, well, I think, I think Carrie watches the show. Wow. I don't believe Deb does, mm -hmm. but Carrie and I have discussed it. She's the one that introduced me to it, as a matter of fact, and she found it first on YouTube, so I could watch it on YouTube. And then, um, and I paint with um, uh, different groups, two different groups um, mm -hmm. in, in Carrie, where I live, Carrie, North Carolina. And um, and we dis we do discuss it. Some of the some of the members there there are about maybe eight or ten of us that wow. meet once a week, and um, and we do discuss what's going on, which is mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. Does something change when you paint with other people? Is there something? I feel like for for me, but and one saying I love is if if you're the best artist in the room, find another room. <laughs> and I feel that way, and I you know it, to level up because. Um, Level if, if every artist is good, it does make me better. I want, mm. I want to do better. And I do learn from them. I remember um, this was years ago. I was standing next to this woman and, and I was thinking to myself, why is, and, and we were painting a nude, and I said, why are, <laughs> why are her boobs pro protruding in the painting uh -huh. and mine are not? Why, mm. what, how can she get that dimension? Mm -hmm. And so, um, and then I looked and she had this... Um, reflective glow under the breast oh. and I thought oh. so when I things like that that I learned just from seeing other people seeing how did they accomplish that mm -hmm. so uh, and, and I do mention that to people when I when I recognize it I say mm -hmm. oh I, you know I noticed this and I find that with the groups that I'm in they're very helpful very not not inclusive not intrusively so mm -hmm. But they're very helpful, and if you ask for a critique, they'll give you a critique. And then we all, I think, we all feel like you take it or leave it. You mm -hmm. know, if, if you tell me, that, if you critique me and you tell me you didn't like this or that, and that's exactly what I was going for, mm -hmm. then, then you just don't like what I'm doing, and that's okay. But if you tell me, you know, that the nose is, is in the wrong place, the nose is, you know, a little to the right, a little to the left, um, and, uh, you know, I can step back and look at it and think, well, that's valid. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go ahead and correct that. Has but I feel, I find, yeah, I find them to be very, um, very helpful. There isn't mm -hmm. a competition as to who's best or who's, you know, mm -hmm. who's doing the best, who won the day. There's none mm -hmm. of that. Which is so what the program is kind of about. But um, yes, exactly. <laughs> now, how important are professional competitions for a professional artist? I, you know, it, it's, it's funny because I, um, I think for some people, they're very, very important and it's validating. And, um, and I've been that way for a long time. I want to get into competitions. I want to perhaps win something. But as I've progressed and I like what I'm doing, 
I feel like it's very expensive to uh, mm. enter a competition. And I am questioning whether it's worth the money for me. Mm -hmm. Do I need that? I um, One of my first classes I took was with Karen Jurek, and I loved mm. her. She has since passed, but I've loved yeah. her. I've talked about her all the time. Mm. And she didn't do any competitions, and she didn't care what anybody else thought of her work. Yeah. And I admired that so. And she was very successful in good yes. galleries, and um, um, she sold everything she, uh, <laughs> I mean, if you, you couldn't get one of her paintings because they sold right away. Yes. Yes, I remember. But she that. had a two-tiered approach to um, um, painting too. She painted differently for her galleries than she painted for her like daily paintings. They, her daily paintings were um, less detailed, less expensive, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so you could have a chance with those. But she started out on eBay. Yeah. And uh, and um, and just she said you just have to be consistent. Mm hmm. So I, I and it, it's uh, I'm having this conflict with myself now. How much do I, it, how much do I need to feed my ego by getting into that, that uh, that program? Oh, so, the ego, man, gets I me know. into trouble. You've lived in the world of portraiture for so long. Do you think there is something different that you all bring than, say, a landscape or a um, a tablescape painter might? employee? Well, I think, um, and, and you know, I can only speak for myself. If I don't get a likeness, um, it's not good. If yeah. the landscape doesn't look exactly like the landscape, most people aren't going to be able to tell. Yes. If the flower doesn't look exactly like the, the, the um, what you're painting, it can be a gorgeous painting, but it yeah. doesn't have to look exact. And I have painted I, what I think are really good portraits that don't look exactly like the person, but I'm not satisfied. And so um, I will redo things many, many, many times if I find I'm not getting the likeness. What's wrong? Is the nose too long? Is, you, know, yeah. you know, so I'm always, and I think that for me is the main difference. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you'll be able to answer this question because I just joined a Facebook and I might edit it out, but I just joined a Facebook group, which are fans of Portrait Artist of the Year and Landscape Artist of the Year. And the 2024 entry date has gone and passed for the Portrait Artist mm -hmm. of the Year. And the people uh, who were rejected are getting their rejection letters. Um, people who mm -hmm. haven't been rejected aren't allowed to say if they've been rejected or not. So uh, who knows? But they're starting to post their paintings on this um, mm -hmm. Facebook site. And their paintings are amazing. I mean, they're so darn good. They're as good as anything that we've seen on the program so far, as good as any of the winners. Mm -hmm. And I had made my peace with the program in terms of it being an entertainment. And then I joined this and I thought, this is really making me angry. So this is sort of a question I have for you about do you want, do you, I'm suspecting it's, it's producer driven. If they get 2000 people applying or more, those judges aren't, that we know are not judging who gets in and out of this competition, right? You know enough about competition. Well, yeah, they're looking at a tiny little, tiny little picture on a screen. Yeah. And so for me, it would be who has the best values, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. who, who you can see the best. Yeah. And I also think they want a variety. So if everyone paints like Rembrandt, then they're not going to choose those all those painters, even though they're wonderful artists. Yeah. And I don't know if they know the backstory for many of these people, but um, I, I just I just think that they want as many different things as they can. That's why every now and then they throw in someone who does, um, um, you know, needle art or something, yeah. which is valid. Mm -hmm. But not for that. That I don't think it's it's fair in that kind of venue because they don't have the time they need to sew yeah. something, you know. Yeah. I, and um and and there are other gimmicks people have used that that I think um you know people will bring a press and they will do you know do the carving yes. and and the yeah. relief and and um and I think that is under that time constraint. I think it's like mixing apples and oranges. Yeah. But I mean, some of them do very well. So yeah, who am I that's to say? True. Oh, can you just speak a little bit about what you do in terms of your role at the National Portrait Gar Gallery? I think people would be interested to know that that... that uh, um, it's the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. 
Yeah. And I'm a, um, I'm a copyist. And to be a copyist, you apply. There's an application online. It's, a, it's quite a lengthy process. Oh, they do a background check. It takes about three months. They do a background check. Um, you have to um, submit letters of recommendation, one that speaks to your character and one that speaks to your ability. And then they, um, um, and then you bring three paintings in for an in-person visit and then, and then you get accepted. And they're not really looking for the best artists. They're looking for people who are serious, people who want to learn. So it, you know, and I always tell people it's not, you know, you don't get accepted because you can paint just like Rembrandt. You get accepted because you're serious and you want to be able to paint like the masters. You want to be able to, yeah. So, um, and then you, you apply and um, you, you have to apply to, to do a painting. So you have to pick three paintings, oh my apply, God. and they will tell you what's available when. And those are the days you can come and they have a locker downstairs. You leave your, your, um, your canvas downstairs oh my. because you can't yeah. be walking in and out with, <laughs> with paintings. <laughs> What do you, so, what do you mean you leave your canvas downstairs? It. Wait, you have to bring your canvas upstairs to work on it? What do you mean? Yeah, you bring your canvas upstairs to work on it, and okay. then they have a locker downstairs, locker room. Oh, if you're going to return. at the end of the day, you go, you go downstairs to the, to the guard, and they open the locker room for you, and then you go put your painting in one of the slots, yes. and come back the next time, and you pick it up, and you go. And they provide an easel and a tarp oh, and a, a stool. And Gosh, you have to a stay, locker like, room six, for six artists. Feet away from you. Pardon me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So the locker room for artists. Yes, and they have. Um, you have to stay like I think it's it's four or six feet away from the painting. You can't be that close. Wow. And uh, the other thing I think is interesting is no one wants to get in your way because they the, the people who are there watching are are there for um, to to observe you know the mm -hmm. paintings and look around. And um, they think I'm there um, for a purpose. Well, I am for just for my own purpose. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no one's hired me to do this. And um, so if they, if they wanted me to move, all they have to do is say, could you please move your tarp? I'd like to take a picture from the front. Uh -huh. No one has ever said that, but mm -hmm. it's within their rights to. Mm -hmm. So I think it's interesting that they will step around me. They will say they're sorry. They will, you know, if they step in front of me and... I always say, you know, this is a, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a free gallery. You know, it's, it's the people's gallery. You come in and you look and I'll paint around you. But people are very polite, usually very kind. Yeah. I suspect patrons of that venue are going to be extremely polite. Yes. As, as very opposed, polite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As opposed to say a sporting. The reason I, I thought of a locker room is I live in a world where and I'm probably going to edit this out too, but my dream was always, you know, when you watch the um, nightly news, the nightly news used to just come on at night instead of all day like it does. Uh -huh. now. And um, as a young person, I thought, oh, I would just love it if they said um, news, weather, sports, you know, there was news, weather, sports. It's always, always been those three uh -huh. things. And then there's a human interest at the end. I thought news, weather, arts. Who decided it yes. was news, weather, sports? Sports is I a know. big part. I know. <laughs> but it's not the world we live in. This our soup. This is, I, I just realized, this is our Super Bowl. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> a little bit. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, what are you supposed to do? Are you, oh, I already know the answer to this because I've spoken to you before. But uh, I think it would be really helpful for other people to know this. Um, which is how do you stay open and not guarded about, you know, and protect your ego? And maybe you can describe how your parents were a, a part of that for you and your um, willingness to take chances. And uh, Yeah, my parents always, I, I was always taught to, that I could, I could do whatever I wanted to do. You know, the, the sky was the limit. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I didn't realize how ingrained that was in me until I wanted to go back to college in my 50s. Hmm. And um, at, during the day with the kids, and even I was, as I was walking towards the campus, I was thinking to myself, oh, my God, this is intimidating. It's all 18 to 24-year-olds, 22-year-olds, and I'm in my 50s, you know, dragging mm -hmm. a leg up, you know. So, so it, um, it was intimidating, but, I, you know, it's just one foot forward. You just do it. And um, I feel that way about art. I, I do the best I can. And um, I, and I'm willing to accept criticism. 
I'm willing to accept. I love a good critique. If someone has something to say, I'm very happy. I will, I think, always say thank you very much. I appreciate it. And then I walk away either thinking, well, she's not right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or that was very helpful. And there are times when I'm not ready to receive the information mm -hmm. yet. You know, I, yeah. I am not. I'm not seasoned enough. And then years down the road, I'll, I'll realize what they said. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, and I think that's one of the reasons I'm always so open. And mm -hmm. I just think, you know, and that's why I try to help as many people as I can. So many people have been kind to me mm -hmm. and I try to help as many people as I can. But it, it's not that I don't care what other people think, but I kind of don't care what other people think. You know, I put <laughs> my stuff up on social media and yeah. And I think if you like it, fine. If you don't scroll past, you know, it's God, really easy so to scroll. mentally healthy for this uh, particular endeavor. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So my last question is, what advice do you have for less experienced portrait artists that you wish you had known earlier in your career? I, um, I can remember um, when I was first starting to draw, and um, the cable guy came. I was doing a self-portrait because I was always trying to do self-portraits. I was doing a terrible job. And the cable guy came in and he was fixing our cable and he walked over and he said, um, you draw. And I covered it up and I said, no, I, I don't, um, you know, I don't really. And she said, well, let me see. And so I kind of sheepishly showed him and he said, well, do you want help or do you just want to keep struggling? And I thought, I want but help. Cable. And so he, right then, I mean, this is the cable guy. Yeah. He did a, a value sc scale for me <laughs> and he drew it. He drew it on my pad. Oh my God. And, um, and he talked to me about sketching all the time. He sketched mm. every night and I didn't heed his advice then, but I have sense. Mm -hmm. And my advice would be, if you want to be good, then you do it. You, I mean, you sketch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You um, and, and if I you say there's nothing to sketch, I sketch my hand, I sketch mm -hmm. my foot, I'll get a mirror, I'll sketch myself, I'll sketch my husband, much to his mm -hmm. chagrin, I'll sketch anything, and I try to paint every day. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get good, you you do it every day. So I mean, if you want it, if you if you want it to be a hobby and just enjoyable and just have fun with it, that's fine. Yeah. But if you want to get good and be serious then I think um, you just sketch as often as you can. Before we leave, I wonder if you could tell us, I'm not going to pronounce this correctly, but tell us about your relationship with the Salmon... Salmon Gundy Club? I, yeah, I always want to call it the Salmonella Club. <laughs> <laughs> Salmon Gundy Club is a very prestigious club in uh, New York City, one of the oldest art associations in the United States. And um, I got to know, I got to... to go to their their club through the Coast Guard Artist Program, COGAP. And Coast Guard Artist Program is a wonderful program where you, you paint paintings of Coast Guard personnel and then the um, Salman Gundy Club uh, hosts a show once a year. So right after I had been in their show and I had had a really good year as far as things for my career, and um, so I thought, well, this is the time to apply. This is it because I have all the boxes checked and mm -hmm. I was fortunate to be accepted. So I'm very excited. Yeah. yeah so. You just, you know, you've been willing to do this with me. I mean, it's, it's, a, you have been one of the most open hearted spirits that I've known in the art world. And, you know, we just happened to cross paths and, you know, on, on the net, I think around 2013. So, um, mm -hmm. and here we are today. <laughs> Well, I, told, I think I've told you before, I, I, gra I graduated from Rutland High School, right yes, there in Vermont. Yes, from, yes, <laughs> which, is, which is as random as the cable guy giving you value. <laughs> I know, the cable guy, one of my favorite stories too. I wish I could remember his name, but it was just, that was so random and so um, um, yeah. timely, you know? Oh gosh, yes, yes. So, but I will say too, when I'm in like airport sketching or... I mean, I've had flight attendants come up to me and say, oh, I just happen to have my portfolio with me. Would you look at it? Oh, my God. Wow. I know. And I'm thinking, hmm. sure. <laughs> you know? So I look at their portfolio. And, and yeah. so it's, it's a great conversation starter, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway. Well, that's because, as we know, 
you know, your dedication is very much to the process and painting every day, which can be extremely isolating, but you seem to have balanced that with being out in the community and being open to people and, uh, and, and, uh, you yeah. certainly create that aura around you. So I am an introvert by nature, mm. but I like people, but I, I, you know, they drain me. So I like to go out and I like uh. to see people and then I retreat and I have to recharge. And uh, so I, um, and I think the art world gives me that perfectly. You know, I get yeah. these spurts of with people mm -hmm. and then I can go to my studio and just be by myself and I listen to my music and I paint and I'm just as happy as can be. Well, thank you so much for doing this with me today and uh, behind the scenes where people won't know if I successfully am able to do this is, this is not the time, first time Maria and I have tried to do this. <laughs> <laughs> which is not her fault at all. It's been technical difficulties on my side. So um, thank you again. Well, I, uh, I appreciate your interest. I appreciate your friendship. And I always enjoy our conversations. Great. Well, thank you. I'm going to go and edit it. And I'll, I will uh, let you know if, uh, if anything worked. Something That sounds work. great. Okay. That sounds, sounds great. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.